Next part of the show, we got to get into something really fun here. I thought this would be a great opportunity to go over some collecting tips, but specifically some tips for those who are looking to take their collecting and their hunt to the next level. I want to get into comic books that to the average viewer, they may look like a standard cover. They may look like a standard regular comic, but because there's something different about it, it makes them valuable. It makes them collectible. Let's get into some specific types of variants. And I like what you said to me off camera about this. This is kind of like after you got your runs down, after you got your keys down, after you memorized all those type of books. Now it started... Now you start to look for those unicorns. These are kind of like the variants before there were really variants. And we're going to talk about these different type of books that you could hunt for in the wild or maybe even in your own long box. That's right. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment on our video. And we are going to jump into some of these topics here. I want to just out the gate talk about valuable errors. There's a lot of ones that fall into this category, but out the gate, we should just have it be the first one we discuss. All right, so with these error comics, you could have recalled comics. Like one that comes to mind is a Star Wars Hot Topic variant. This was around the time of Avengers Age of Ultron, and it had a, an ad for these Funko Pops in the back. And it showed this Gray Hulk Funko Pop that I guess they were, Marvel wasn't supposed to show it yet or Hot Topic wasn't supposed to show it yet, so they got recalled. Whoever got a copy of that variant started flipping those on eBay for big bucks. But what we're going to go into is an older book, a book from 1996 that was recalled. Let's go deep cut with this gem because I want to try to surprise some members of the community. Recalled comic books happens often. Like every year there's stuff that goes on. So members are going to know off the cuff some to look for when they're on the hunt. But I wanted to find one that people just don't know about. So yeah, 1996, there was a Mission Impossible comic book that came out, issue number one. And it was recalled. And we know it was recalled because there were two panels that were changed and distributed and both comics exist. But why did they redo the panels? That's the thing. From there on out, it's legendary. We know that the comic was recalled because there's two that exist. On page three, both panels are different. One panel shows Ethan Hunt in frame, and the other, he is gone. And then the next panel that was changed, you have an Ethan Hunt's face that was redrawn, kind of Maurice Severin status in this Hulk annual number one Steranko cover that was done. And what is said to have happened is that Tom Cruise received a copy of this issue before it hit the stands, and he had some negative things to say about this comic. That sounds like something Tom Cruise would do, though. He didn't like how it looked or whatever and said, no, 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 you got to pull this. Specifically, he said that Ethan Hunt looked too feminine. <laughs> so, like, I want to know from the community, we'll put both pictures up here. Do you think that this Ethan Hunt looks so feminine enough that the artist would need to go back, you know, get it back to the editor, get it photoshopped and redone. Hit us in the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. The next type of book we're going to talk about are the newsstand variants. Correct. Newsstand comic books were indicated by having a UPC box traditionally in the bottom left of the comic. And the comics that were sold on newsstands were printed less, meaning that these comics were more scarce. And because they were in the wild, literally outside on newsstands, they're a lot more scarce and high grade. So you're going to know some books that get a premium for a 9.8 newsstand just because of how scarce they are in that grade. I wanted to pick some comic books to chat about that were newsstand variants that were going to surprise members of the community because they know the cover. But they're going to be surprised to see how much their newsstand counterpart goes for and i think we should start with the gabriel del Otto morbius the living vampire issue number one newsstand variant first of all gabriel del Otto is a fan favorite variant cover artist to begin with but when you can get a number one and a newsstand variant that's much more scarce you're going to talk big bucks dude this raw comic like standard cover a it's cool but it's like an eight dollar book ten dollar book in not, you know, 9.6 to 9.8. You know, it was printed heavily and it's a really cool run. But the new stand variant of this hits highs of 90 to to $100. This is raw. That's correct. Raw and all you have to do is look out for that UPC in the bottom part of the comic. The next book we're going to talk about is a super common book. Everybody had a couple of these in their boxes growing up. This is the red foil cover Venom Lethal Protector number one. But... I bet you nine times out of 10, it's a, a direct market with Spidey in the box. I think he's saying, oh no, or something like that. 
the newsstand variant is much more rare and it goes for more money. I've literally stood in comic shops with dealers who have like 15, 20 copies thinking that they're all the same. And then I'll go through and go, no, pull this one out. No, 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 pull this one out. No, no, no. Because they go for double. Lethal Protector, you know, when it's not Venom, like when the movies aren't popping and they're like, you can go watch them right now. The lull right. is about $15 for this book, 20 bucks for a high grade. But a newsstand variant of this same issue goes for double that, 50 bucks. The next one I want to talk about, I think is really cool because this is another one that is a super common book. It's Spawn number one. I think they printed over a million copies of this. Uh, what's interesting is that the direct market did not have a box whatsoever. You only have a box on the newsstand ver uh, version, which is much more rare. And when you have a million print run, you need something to offset that to, to give it some kind of collectability. So the new stand for spawn number one is, is one of those books. Dude, it's like a, tw what, a $20 raw book. And even that yeah. seems like a little high to quote, but it is a $20 <laughs> book right now with like movie spec. I mean, even McFarlane would probably laugh at you for paying $20 for his book. But a new stand variant, I looked up, dude, this month, a couple days ago, $70, you know, for a VF near mint copy sold. Yeah, that, that's a big difference. And, and it, it is sucks that this book is not valuable because it's the first appearance of Spawn. It's Spawn number one, and he's on the cover. It has everything going for it except that print run, man. So that's why the Spawn collectors especially are going to want something that's a little bit more value. Uh, and this uh, newsstand is a good one. All right, let's take a look at some DC newsstands that you just got to know. Um, these ones are quite a bit bigger, but they're also very just random comics like they're not major keys they're not ones you're gonna go oh yeah that's the first appearance of taskmaster like that's gonna be more worth more if i find a variant of it no no no. Right. this is superman 50 the second print and the way that you're gonna know there's two indicators that this is the second print you're dealing with because there's more than this second print that exists there's other versions but you're looking for the scarce second print with a upc in the lower left and the words historic engagement issue at the top now at a 9.8 this book hits 300 dollars all day long right now if you go to ebay vf copies of this book could be found for starting at a hundred dollars and there are very few of them listed that's a cool one you know what's funny about that era of dc books a lot of times the second third fourth fifth printings are the more rare more expensive books and this is just one of those newsstand kind of variants that are one of those Absolutely. It's similar to this next one on the list, Batman 457. This That's the Scarecrow cover, right? Yeah, Scarecrow's on there. You got Batman hanging upside down. This is the first Jason Todd as Robin. It's a minor key, yeah. but I think for like newsstand variants go, this is the one that most collectors in the community think of for that price variation. This is a $10 book in high grade, you know, 15 bucks. You know, some people may pay 20 to guarantee the 9.8 slot, but with the new stand edition, um, you're going to know if this is it because it says the words new Robin at the top of the comic, in addition to the UPC in the bottom right of the cover. This mm. book goes for over a thousand dollars the high grade estimated value is 1.8 thousand on key collector comics and if you go online right now you can see vf starting at a thousand minimum dang that's crazy so keep an eye out for this book i can attest that i have actually seen copies of this book go missed on dealers tables in their dollar bin issues and i've also seen this book sold on amazon for under ten dollars because the listers didn't know they just listed the book it looks like a standard copy and when right. you go onto overstreet or you go on key collector if you don't check the variant button or if you don't look at the different types of books that exist for these copies they could be missed and they generally are all right, the next set of variants we're going to talk about are the DCU logo variants. I think this is one of my favorite types of variants because this was something that was really uncovered by the masses in this community in this last year and a half. And what are we talking about? We're talking about these packs of comics that were largely sold to like toy stores, specifically Toys R Us is like notorious for being heavy suppliers of these. And these were packages of comic books that were distributed there um, containing an assortment of books, but they were printed for these packs. And the way you can tell them apart is in the bottom left where the UPC would be, it actually says DC Universe, making these a different 
reprint. It's a different version of the standard cover A. But what makes this intriguing is that because these went back to print and because they were so low print, these are looked at as some of the rarest DC comics that exist. That's awesome. Those are the, these are the original variants. This is something that was not made on purpose to be collectible. It just happened to be a different version of a book that was much more scarce. So I'm going to point out a couple here that are really fun that their counterpart isn't worth very much. Um, Batman Adventures issue number 36. Absolutely love this cover. And you can get this book for under 12 bucks in high grade. But with that DCU Universal logo on the bottom, that right there is an indicator that it was sold in a pack. It was sold at a store, likely at random because it was kind of a grab bag status. You couldn't look inside to see what was inside. And yeah, this one book in high grade goes for $100 strong. What's the other one we got? Legionnaires number 16. This is the Adams Hughes book. That's right. And this one is just one that people got to know, but it's a great example about how some of these just randomly are worth more money because they are even lower print. Imagine this. Batman Adventures is a pretty high printed comic book. I mean, it's Batman. Relatively speaking, you know, it is a, a, a different line of Batman comics, but it was still heavily printed compared to Legionaries. But this was an Adam Hughes cover and this goes for 50 bucks. Otherwise found in the dollar bin. Yeah, so you got to just be checking that barcode. Look for that DCU and you might find yourself a gem. That's right. And there are categories for all of these different comic books on Key Collector Comics. So if you want to look at a bunch of them all at once, you can use code TOM101 to unlock a free one-week subscription. And now we got to go on to what is my favorite type of variant. And What's that? I, dude, it's the – wait a minute. Dude, what is your shirt? I, I, okay, oh, comic fam, you don't you don't know this, but Jem is recording on his on a separate camera. So I'm looking at him on a webcam, and I can't see the bottom of it. Can you kind of stand up a little bit for me so I can see it? This is my Mark Jeweler shirt, dude. That's my Mark Jeweler shirt. No, that's, no, no. no. I designed is, that shirt. This is the Blue Gem Gem Mint Comic Tom Mark Jeweler's variant shirt. Dude, that's my shirt. It's the same. I'm just kidding. I'm a comic fan. We we collaborated and made a variant of a shirt that I made. And if you want to support both of our channels, we now have the Mark Jewelers Gem Mint variant Mark Jewelers shirt. How dope is that? <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. I'll put the link in the description, or you can go to comictom101.store. We're splitting the proceeds. Um, you're help supporting both shows, dude. I thought it was a great idea. I I made the design of this shirt. I don't know, a year and a half ago. And we weren't doing a whole lot of collaborating back then. And the gem just looked good. So we rolled with it. But then I, it hit me when I was at C2E2. I'm like, dude, what if we made that gem blue? Right. It, it lined up. We had to do it. It works out perfect for both of us. <laughs> All right. So why don't we talk about Je about Mark Jeweler variants now? So Mark Jeweler, and I think this is what the shirt says, right? The original variant. So Mark Jeweler was a jeweler who would put uh, his ads inside comics, but it wouldn't be inside every issue. The issue I always think about the most is the Incredible Hulk 181. The Mark Jeweler variant goes for more than the regular because it just makes it a little bit more scarce. But Mark Jeweler had his insert in a ton of books. Mark Jeweler sold a lot of different stuff, um, but primarily their ads consisted of things that were being targeted to males. I mean, there's a lot of guys who were buying comic books, so that worked. And some of these ads were for like high school rings, engagement rings, because they were marketing these towards military personnel, and that's where they sold these ads. And the comics that would largely have the centerfold ad, which is what you're looking for, um, they're different colors, um, but... You'll, you'll know when you find it. The centerfold has a full ad for Mark Jewelers. We'll show pictures of it. And those comics would be sold near or on military bases because they were targeting personnel who were just coming from high school and would be interested in possibly buying a high school ring or a ring for their sweetheart. And you're right, Jem. Not every comic has a Mark Jeweler variant. And what's fascinating about this and a lot of the comics on this list, really all of them, is that that's what makes them unique, is that there's right. no central list of everything that exists. They're still being found. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, it wasn't in every book, right? So, like, 
Werewolf by Night 32. Some of them have the Mark Jewelers insert, some of them don't. And we don't really know exactly which books have them. It was kind of like it could have skipped a month, but you see them a lot in those Bronze Age books. That's right. And they definitely add inflation to the comics. But what's fascinating is that this is a recent inflation that's been added. I'm talking within the last three years. Now, Mark Jeweler variants have been collected by collectors for a long time, but it wasn't until the last few years that they would add significant value. And it started with the keys. It started with the New Mutants 98s and the Werewolf by Nights, as you described, adding 20, 30, 40% value, you know, when considering the grade of the comic because of an insert. And then that trickle down effect applied to other comic books. And then they come up randomly. We'll see comics that we didn't expect to have a Mark Jeweler variant have it just like we've seen DC um, DCU logo variants pop up and people go crazy because they don't see them. And then when they come up, Oh, now, you know, they exist. And there's a lot of hungry collectors after them. Now we can go through a lot of different sales over the last couple of years showing the change in price with Mark Jeweler variants, but I think maybe a more recent example would be better for this. Yeah, there's actually a book that's shown up on your top 10 list for the last two weeks in a row that has now been found to have a Mark Jeweler's insert. That's right. We're talking about Spectacular Spider-Man 176. This is the first appearance of the Corona, um, the villain in Spectacular Spider-Man. And I think this is a great example to show the power of a variant as it applies to its value, because this is a book that was a dollar bin a month ago. Then that rose to twenty dollars, and then that hit highs of thirty-five to forty. And just in the last couple of days, we see Mark Jeweler variants of this issue hit fifty dollars and rising. So that's there is that inflation I'm talking about in real time. Yeah, that's a good example. Comic fam, I encourage you to become affluent in these variants. Look through them. Go through the categories on Key Collector. Know what to scout for. They go missed on eBay so often. A lot of these don't even have a very high census count for being graded. There's a lot of opportunities in those long boxes and possibly in your own collection. Yeah, so guys, make sure you uh, get your knowledge up so you can find those things in the wild. 